this demo shows you how to create synthetic in this inspired environment. You can go through tunes and then launch world type synthetic. Select the well list that you are working with and then of course the wells. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, or you can directly select it from the view which is the, uh, a lot more intuitive. So just MB3 on that and drop down menu and launch. Uh, immediately you can see that um, splash screen to show that um, the uh, the synthetic initiate and then you can select either working with ham or dead seismic domain in this case we're working with ham so now uh, to we have a wizard to guide through entire workflow step by step uh, we're gonna start with creating a new synthetic and of course you need sonic lockup and density lockup in this case, uh, it's important to notice that um, when you select the Sonic Lockup, you want to select the one that have a long range of lockup, so you have more chance to correlate with more seismic events, basically. So this looks good. And then now we go next um, and select the density. In here, beside the lockup, if you don't have density, for example, you can simply put in the uh, the constant value as well so here uh, obviously we don't have a, a long density like Sonic which is okay the application can handle that and here we go with the assumption that we don't have any VSP and check shot basically we're gonna calculate the uh, a pseudo check shot from uh, from input Sonic locker uh, what it does it, it convert the sonic lock into velocity and then at anywhere that have significant chain of velocity uh, we put in a pipe point for you to use that uh, and later on uh, to do the stretching and squeezing a uh, filter is very handy so as you see here uh, if you put in higher value you will have a less number of points um, that will help you to, uh, to adjust the synthetic quicker and the last step of selecting um, data is of course a volume that you want to, uh, to correlate with right? very good so now we have synthetic compute from locker display as a red and then the seismic uh, correlation that we need to correlate to is uh, display in the wing and format so let's just turn on a wavelet track and go to the next page there are the um, the parameter in here we just start with a recur and what I like you to do is you just, just keep changing this and then compare the wavelet that you see in the wavelet track to the actual seismic wavelet in, in the seismic right there in addition to that you know besides that's the vision um, comparisons you can also launch the spectrum plot Okay, and that will show you exactly what the spectrum look like. So here in the wavelet viewer, you can see the uh, the red is the the spectrum from from the seismic, and the blue is the Richter. So about twenty hertz or so, uh, they are they are all down to like seventeen uh, hertz is is about matched with the seismic. I will use 20 hertz for now, so it's just a round number, so we are, you know, doing things easy to, to remember that. Very good, so we got a, um, a wavelet to use, and now the next step is to just start correlating the seismic. Um, one thing before to do that is the um, you know you can always see the seismic on this display desktop however one thing that I would recommend to do here is just, just display a piece of the seismic in the same view so you got a feeling about what seismic look like what the structure look like uh, I just display a hundred or so seismic trays uh, and display in the variable density so that's good. So in one view, I have a detailed correlation view as well as the um, the synthetic and the seismic. And when you do the correlate of the of the synthetic correlation, you want to correlate it with the multiple um, event as as well. 
and to start I would recommend you just start from the top down uh, the simple reason is the um, when you start from the top you typically have a, a better seismic quality uh, at, as you go a lot deeper um, seismic signature tend to be um, have more noise and less resolution so that's good so before we go in and editing uh, individual check shot point we want to display the QC curve one way drift and interval velocity right. you can adjust every interval point as uh, anyone but in here I'm gonna just show you a, a quick way to select multiple point using ship mv1 and when you select them they highlight it and then you just stretching all of them and here you go uh, if you notice you know we got a very low correlation before by just one adjustment of select a group point editing I can immediately improve the correlation big time and the uh, now looking at the drift curve it looks really nice it's a linear trend um, of the drift compared between the check shot and the sonic velocity So now, of course, there is some minor or, s or very small time shape that can be applied. Right. So uh, just like that. And uh, turn on that auto time shape and you can get that. So here I got 61% of correlation. I'd be happy with that. And let's just save that into the database. I just code it like that. Uh, I would like. I typically this this is the time depth curve and the synthetic the same so they are like in pair right? so you can choose to save at the preferred time depth and prefer synthetic so that's the way I'm gonna do it now and you see that matches and when it's saved to the database you can uh, go back to your uh, interpretation environment and uh, and display it. So go there, synthetic, and then we go to the world and we just add. Okay, and then you can see that immediately uh, select for me. Here we go. 